Hey, what's up guys? It's Grant here. I hope all is well. Uh, today, I'm going to be collaborating with a fellow person, individual, who is also majoring in or going into cybersecurity, and she is a student. Uh, her name is Rebecca Richard. She has a YouTube channel called Rebecca Richard or Simply Mixed. Um, so go check her out. She has some really, really quality content. So go check out her channel. So oftentimes I get questions uh, regarding how or what to do within cybersecurity. What kind of degree should I pursue? You know, I get people who DM me or email me. And one of the things that I try to tell everyone who contacts me or who asks questions is that there's going to be a wide array of different areas that these cybersecurity degrees specialize in and focus on. Since cybersecurity in of itself is pretty big, uh, there's all kinds of classes or topics that could be emphasized within a particular degree. I wanted to, to compare some of the different between cybersecurity degrees. Uh, we are in the United States, both in colleges, but I wanted to see what the differences were. So Rebecca and I got together and we collaborated and we came up with five overall categories or topics uh, that we will be going over uh, and comparing our degrees or outlining what is within our degrees for these five categories. So, why don't I give a brief introduction to Rebecca and myself, I guess. Please don't make fun of me. I know you like those dance moves. My dancing sucks, but really we should actually get on to this video. So, starting with Rebecca's introduction. Hello everybody, my name is Rebecca and I'm currently studying cybersecurity and information systems at UTSA, which is the University of Texas at San Antonio. I I'm also a cybersecurity student. My name is Grant Collins. If you're on my channel, you know that. Uh, I am currently an undergraduate in cybersecurity and I go to Southeast Missouri State. To start off with category number one, we will go with the prerequisites, the classes that we have to do before getting into our specific topics relating to our degree. Prerequisites are pretty much split into two different sections at my school. We have our Texas prerequisites and then our College of Business prerequisites. So for the Texas prerequisites, they're pretty much the basic classes that everybody has to take. So your two English classes, an art class, like your two science classes. And then because Texas is Texas, there's also Texas history and Texas politics. My business prerequisites, I cannot lie, these were rather time consuming, but they were extremely helpful. I definitely learned so much in those classes. I had to take accounting one and two, micro and macroeconomics, and then all of those classes basically came together, had a baby, and neglected it, and then I took finance. <laughs> I also had to take marketing and management, which I would highly recommend that if you haven't already taken them or if you're a freshman, to look into clipping out of as many classes as possible. I think it's actually free your freshman year and I didn't know that until I was a senior in college. I had to take a speech class. There's this class called Information Systems Fluency, which is basically like how to use Microsoft Office. I also had to take Algebra with Calculus for Business, which actually wasn't that bad at all. I have a management class that's kind of like a capstone class for the business part of my degree. And then I also had to take Statistics 1, 2, and 3. <laughs> Before getting into the major specific classes for cybersecurity, we first have to complete uh, some basic math prerequisites, and that, that's about it. So uh, for cybersecurity degrees specifically, before we can even get into to the cybersecurity classes or computer science, like the entry-level ones, we have to complete pre-calculus 1 and 2, elementary probability and statistics. Uh, we have to also do intro to physics and technical communications. Then for the general studies, we have to complete a certain amount of hours per study. We have U.S. history, English, humanities, and social behaviors, and then we have oral communications. And we all have to complete a specific number of credits with whatever classes we want to choose within those general studies topics. programming, UTSA definitely focuses primarily on Java, so I had to take Java 1 and Java 2, and they call it Introduction to Object-Oriented Programming. I really think that as long as you just understand 
like the foundations of programming. It's really just syntax that changes. So it's like not the most important thing in the world. You can definitely just go on your own and like learn other languages if you ever need to. There is one class at UTSA called Application Development. And in that class, we learn Python. So those are our two languages, Java and Python. We have Introduction to Computer Science with Python. We have Computer Science 1 and 2, uh, basically both written or we use Java for both of those classes. We have C in the post-6 environment where we learn the basics of C and also learn Unix or work with Linux distributions. We have computer systems and assembly language where we are working with lower level programming languages. And then we have a database class as well as a web development and security class that we work with. Uh, those would be HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and MySQL. Since I am finally a senior, all of my classes are now directly related to cybersecurity, thank God. So when you begin the cybersecurity program, there's a one credit hour class called Inside Cyber that they make everybody take. It's kind of like an introduction to what cybersecurity is. They kind of show you what jobs you could potentially have. And I think they kind of use it as like a reality check, like a wake up call, like, hey, like this is what you would be doing. Following that, I got to take Introduction to Telecommunications, which is basically like Introduction to Networking. I'm taking Network Security and Information Assurance and Security, which is basically the Security Plus or Sec Plus certification. One of our textbooks is the exact textbook for the Sec Plus certification, so that's basically what that class is. Unofficially a certification class, and we probably deep dive a little bit more than the textbook would. This semester, I am also taking Operating System Security, which is definitely my favorite class so far. I'm taking Introduction to Digital Forensics, which has been super, super interesting. You really get to dive into the legality of investigating digital assets and what you really can and can't do like as a cybersecurity professional. I learned in that class last week that some of the things that I used to do to learn when I was new to cybersecurity are highly illegal. So I would highly recommend that even if you don't go to college that you take a cyber law class so that somebody in a black suit doesn't come knocking at your door at 10 p.m. ready to confiscate your laptop. <laughs> I do still have a few classes left in my degree plan about a semester and a half worth. So I'm gonna be taking application development which is that class where we learn Python. We're taking web application security, which I'm personally very excited for because that is the area that I'm probably going to be working in. I'm going to be taking systems analysis and design. There is a class called advanced topics in information systems, which is kind of like the capstone for the cyber part of my degree. There is intrusion detection. I have the option to take malware reverse engineering, and then I also could take a full on cyber law class. For cyber security classes, unfortunately, the newer degree map that I don't uh, unfortunately have anymore. Uh, I don't have as many cybersecurity classes, but my cybersecurity classes include Introduction to Cybersecurity, Information Security and Assurance, uh, Information Security in System Administration, Web Application Security, Network Security, Mathematical Cryptography, which is more of a uh, math-based class, as well as Web Development and Security, and Security in Data Protocols. So those are all the cybersecurity classes that I will go through. Uh, for my particular degree now. I think UTSA does a really good job at ensuring that we have tons of hands-on experiences within our curriculum. In our programming classes, for example, we have a lab class that's associated with each one. So on top of our regular coursework, we're also getting little side projects that correlate with what we're learning. And it's just, again, more practice for programming specifically. And then I can definitely say that there are tons and tons and tons of labs that I have to complete. I have like three labs a week that I have to do for my classes and they're all kind of like learning either terminal or PowerShell or some type of like command line environment and then like playing around with different virtual machines and different encryption methods and just tons of different stuff, you name it. Again, tons of labs, tons of experience. Because UTSA is very, very close to the NSA and DOD here in San Antonio, we also have something called a red team, blue team, and it's basically attack and defend for cybersecurity. So it's a really cool way that you can like get a group of friends together and then just try things out, learn, and then even meet some really cool industry professionals. Unfortunately, at Southeast, we don't have a ton of hands-on training. My degree has a fundamental base in networking for IT. 
So in those networking classes, uh, we work with real world equipment. Now the newer degree map is more programming based and they aren't working as with as much hand-eye equipment. They're more on the theory based. So we do a lot of practical hands-on labs with Cisco equipment and general desktops for uh, those classes. We also have the cyber range, which just opened up this year. It is a dedicated cybersecurity range for only cybersecurity students who want to, uh, you know, practice and learn more. And we also have the Cyber Defense Club, which anyone is welcomed. And we have a cyber defense team where you try out and you compete against other teams if you make the cyber defense team uh, around the region. So those are really the three opportunities we have for hands-on training. Minor opportunities. So I mentioned previously that I am double majoring in cybersecurity and information systems. So you could also minor in information systems, but at UTSA, the degree plans are very similar. So luckily I am able to just take four extra classes, I believe, and then have a double major, which looks real nice on the resume. I think the two most popular minors that people do are both in digital forensics and computer science. The computer science one takes a little bit longer since it's not in the school of business, it's in the school of science at my school. So if you wanted to pursue that, it would just take a little bit more time. But the digital forensics one is really, really cool. Again, you, there's more digital forensics related classes and I know that they have to take malware reverse engineering, which is really cool. Such a great skill to have. There is network and data center management. That is another minor that you can have. And there's a class called data center infrastructure planning. And I don't really know what else is in that degree plan, but it's just something really cool that you could specialize in if you wanted to work in data warehousing. And of course, there are other degree plans that you could pursue if you wanted to, but those are the main ones that directly correlate with cybersecurity. And for minor opportunities, primarily speaking, although you can do basically any minor, uh, our cybersecurity degree sets you up for either a networking minor, a information systems minor, or a computer science minor. So that is the difference between uh, some my degree and Rebecca's degree. And if you're in an undergraduate program for cybersecurity or maybe computer science that have an emphasis on cybersecurity or whatever it is, there's always gonna be uh, some differences. Thank you very much to Rebecca. I really appreciate her time. Uh, of course, go check out her channel. And yeah, until the next time, have a good day.